Hi everybody, so for this video, we are going to be learning about how we can make our code shorter and more efficient by using these things called data structures, uh, specifically something called an array and something called a ring. So as of this point, we've been using the play and sleep functions to make notes and then space our notes out through time. Uh, and in order to do that, we write play, and then we write sleep, and then play, and then sleep. So we write lots of lines of code to make that happen. So what a data structure is, is a way of holding a bunch of different numbers or values, or in our case, notes, uh, in one place, one line of code, so that we can access them without having to write a bunch of lines of code. So here, you'll see how you can make uh, longer pieces without having to necessarily write lots and lots of code to do that. Okay, so um, first off, let's just say I'm going to write, uh, let's say I want to play three notes at the same time. So I'm going to do uh, these three notes, 60, 67, 64. So remember, if we don't have sleep in between any of our uh, play functions here, they're all going to play at the same time. All right. And there you see it says I play those all right there. Now, I'm going to do the same thing using a data structure, which is an array, OK? So an array, to make an array, we need to have two square brackets. Now, square brackets are in the upper right-hand corner of your keyboard right by the delete button there. Okay, so these are square brackets that we have to use. Now inside of these square brackets, I'm going to write these three values, 60, 67, and 64. All right, so 60, then I need a comma, so we need commas between all the values in this array, 67, 64. All right, so there I have it. Now I'm going to delete this, okay, but I still need my play. Now I have play, then I have an array of three notes, and when I run it, I get the exact same thing. Now it looks slightly different in the console here, just because of the way we've written it. But I have now taken three lines of code and made it one line of code. And now instead of me having to write even more, I could add just another number to it. And I could continue to add, and I could play as many notes as I want all at once in this array with instead of writing a bunch of lines of code. So that's the first way we can use an array to play a bunch of notes at the same time. But let's say I want to play each note individually in my array. All right. So there's a few things you need to do in order to make that happen. All right. And this just to kind of show you what it would look like. Let's say. I want this to happen. So sleep one, and then sleep one, and then sleep one, and then I want to play 70, okay? So I'm going to just comment this out. This is what I want to have in my array. Okay, so I got nine lines of code here. I want to make this shorter using my array. Okay, so that's what I want to hear. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is add uh, something to the end of my array. And what I'm going to put is a dot and then T-I-C-K, tick. Okay, uh, so tick is a mechanism in Sonic Pi that sort of is like a counter and it will move through certain data structures or just sort of keep count uh, when you start the program uh, and that will help you move through certain things like this. But this is not going to get me quite where I want to be yet. But if we run it, we hear I get just the first note in my array. Okay, so what I want to happen here. Uh, you might think, okay, well, I need to add a sleep after it. Maybe that will work. Nope, still has no effect. Okay, but the sleep is going to be important. Uh, so what I need to do is now add the dot times block, okay, a repetition block. So I need to add the number of times is going to be the number of notes I have in my array, the number of values. So I have one, two, three, four in my array. So I'm going to write four dot times do. And remember, if I have a do, I need an end as well. So I'm going to put the end right here. Okay, so now if I run it, I get the results 
that I'm looking for. So the way the tick works is the first time it plays the first one, it sleeps for one. It comes back around, it ticks up to the next value, sleeps for one, goes back around. Third time, it ticks up to the next value, sleeps for one, goes back around. Fourth time, ticks to the next value, goes up again. Now let me just show you very quickly what would happen if there was no sleep in here. Okay, so in this case, I get all the notes together again. Now, it did actually, because if you look, they're not all in the same line as they were when I played it as the array without the dot tick. Okay, what happens is it did play them one at a time, but without any sleep, it's so fast at computing those that they all just seem like they happen at once, okay? So that's why we need to make sure we have some sort of sleep inside when we're using an array, all right? So now, let's say I want to add more notes to my array. So I'm gonna do, let's say, 72, 74, uh, 76, all right? So I've added now three more notes to my array. So if I press play, I still only hear four notes and hopefully you probably figured out that's because I still have only four times in this repetition block. So if I wanna hear all seven of these notes, I need to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven values in my array. That means I need to repeat seven times through this block in order to hear all those notes. All right. So there we have it, okay? Now let's say I wanna hear all those notes played twice, okay? So I wanna hear all these notes and then I want it to come back around and do it again. So the, the first thought would be, okay, all I need to do is add a 14 dot times. So I need to just double the amount of times that I do it and then when it gets to the end, it'll go back around, okay? But let's look at what happens. So I'm gonna tell you this is not necessarily what's going to happen. So if we look over here, you see how all of a sudden now it's giving me the notes as the rest. So we heard seven notes, 60, 67, 64, 70, 72, 70, okay? But then once we got through those seven notes, it gave me rests, okay? And this is because in an array, uh, when you are ticking through it, it's gonna just continue moving through. And if it doesn't see anything after the seventh note, it's gonna assume you didn't want anything there, okay? Now I'm gonna make uh, a point here is that this actually, if you notice the the buttons and like the scope in this version of Sonic Pi I'm using for this video is different than other videos I'm doing, okay? So if you go to info and you check here, this little V3.1.0, okay? I'm using a slightly older version of Sonic Pi. So the one I'm usually using is the newer one, which is 3.2.0, okay? And in that, this would actually work you would, it would go back and repeat. So they've made some changes so that these arrays will go back and repeat. But I'm doing this just to indicate that if you have an older version, I want you to be aware that this is what's going to happen, okay? So what I need to do now is make a slight adjustment to the data structure I'm using. So I've been using an array, which is these square brackets, okay? But I'm now gonna use something called a ring, okay? Uh, so a ring, I'm gonna delete, I'm gonna keep my numbers here, all right? But I'm gonna replace them with uh, these square brackets with just regular round parentheses. So you think of a ring, you think it's round, it's circular. So we're gonna need using these uh, rounded brackets, these uh, parentheses, okay? And inside, I'm gonna write the word first, ring, okay? So to make a ring, we need to have regular parentheses and we need to have the word ring at the beginning. And if you think of a ring, a ring is circular. There's no beginning point and end point. It's just a continuous circle. So a ring is when we get to the end of the notes that we have inside a ring, it will go back around and play those notes again. So now if I run it, So there we have the ring, got to the end. We can trace it in the, lo the log here. It went all the way up to 60, 76, the last one, and then went right back to the beginning, okay? Now let's say I made it maybe 
18 dot times. All right, and I'm gonna change the speed here just uh, for the sake of time. Okay, so that time it went through seven times and then it went through seven more times and then it went one, two, three, four. So the last it went one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So if the number of times that you have is not equally divisible by the number of notes you have in your ring, it will just stop at whatever the, the note is as it ticks through, okay? So that is basically it with data structures with arrays and rings. There's one more thing I wanna show you here, uh, getting back to why we use rings instead of arrays at some point. So I'm gonna do one more, uh, I'm gonna follow this ring with an array, let's say. So I'll do play and then maybe I'll do 70, 60, 50, 40, 30, uh, I don't know, maybe I'll start with 80. I don't wanna to get too low there. Okay, so I have an array here and then I have dot tick. And then I'm gonna sleep for let's say 0 0.25. I'm gonna use a synth here. Let's do the D uh, try. Okay, now something wrong is gonna go wrong here. So let's play through. Okay, so it played everything in there, but then you see I got these rests here, okay? It's because again, tick is a counter. Now in a ring, it will always go back, okay? But at this point, it's count the tick has counted up to 18. So when it got to this array, it was actually looking for the 18th value in that array, which is not here. There's only six values, okay? So you could run into trouble down the line if you're starting to use arrays and rings and stuff like that. So one little trick I'm gonna show you is just before this next array, I'm gonna do tick reset, okay? So tick reset will just set the counter back to zero and then when I do a new array it should just go right back to the beginning. So let's try this one more time. Okay, so there we go. So that tick reset doesn't hurt to include, especially if you're gonna be having different arrays throughout multiple arrays, okay? But that is the basic introduction to arrays and rings and data structures. Again, you can check your info. If you're using version 3.2, you're not gonna run into that problem with tick reset. Uh, but it, if you do, if you see that you don't hear it, that's always a good thing to just throw in there after each. Uh, dot times and data structure you use, okay? So for this assignment, I've created uh, just a little bit of a reference sheet here, which goes over arrays and rings just in the way I've shown you. Uh, for the projects, pretty simple, just use an array, play multiple notes, use an array with dot tick, uh, and use a ring to play through a pattern of notes more than once, okay? Make sure you're using that uh, dot or tick dot reset if you need to. And then when you're done, just copy and paste your code and submit it into the submission document. Remember, this will count for the music engagement assignment for the week, okay? But make sure you're getting everything on the checklist in order to receive credit for that, okay? So that is all for this Sonic Pi lesson and can't wait to see what 